Good morning. Good morning. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's great to see you this morning. Hi, I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Stitchuation Room, a Monday through Friday daily stitching retreat where we just uh, visit and stitch and uh, organize, tidy, purge, whatever it is we're going to do. So it's, you guys are still cold all over the place, it looks like. No sound? You should have sound. Let me check. Let me see what's going on here. I think I have sound. I have sound. Yeah. Yes, I hit record. We're good. Paula says, it was me with the sound. Sorry. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But you know what? I do appreciate y'all checking up, right? I'm looking behind me and going, what is that hot mess? Oh, this has probably been here for days and you guys haven't said anything. That's my magnetic mat. I know when people watch videos, they look all around at what is around people. So I got a new quilt. I This is, um, it's not new. I finished it a long time ago, but well, I finished the top a long time ago. This is uh, Merriment by Gingerbur for Moda. And it's a little panel quilt. And Valerie, my, my sidekick Valerie, actually made the, the sample quilt that was hanging in Scrappy Quilter, my old local quilt shop, years ago. And, oops, this was the first quilt where I actually, and again, it was years ago, but this was the first quilt where I actually paid attention to fabric placement and really made a point to work on my, you know, seams, seam allowance correctness and my points and uh, some success, some not. So, and this, I'm not picking on my own work, but these are things that I noticed that this was the first, hi Jeannie, <laughs> this was the first uh, quilt where I really focused on the little things as opposed to just sewing the squares together and getting a big quilt finished. I focused on these tiny little things. And so like I wanted to make sure that these little blocks, these trees were going the right way. And so this one is not, and this one is not, but the rest of them, you know, it was just little stuff like that, that before, before that time, I had never thought about those things. And that's just a natural progression that quilters make. So this quilt is, uh, well, I love the pattern and I'm not going to not use it because of those things, but I had finished or I was working on it at a retreat that I had gone to and down in Yoakum, Texas, not there anymore, but I love it. It has panels and I did uh, this, this is where, is this where I started my square and a square technique? See, this one, I got all the little snow flurries going the same way. And that's a square and a square. It's actually not a square and a square. Those are four half square triangles. So all the snow flurries, and not just the red, but also the, the off-white, all going the same direction. So it's just little stuff like that that I was looking at going, oh, okay, I get the details now on a quilt. And then I had some extra... I had some extra panels left from the kit. I had a couple of orphan blocks and an orphan block is a leftover block that didn't get used. Some people get upset about that term. Y'all just, it's okay. So I, I put those in the middle and then I had four other little panel pieces. Okay. That, and I piece the backing. How about that? Feast my backing. Love it. Absolutely love it. But yeah, um, and when I pieced the backing, I also made sure my trees were all going the same direction. Okay. So on this particular quilt, I had a bunch of successes and a couple of fails. 
But I think it's awesome to challenge yourself to do those kinds of things and learn if you're playing with directional fabric, um, how to sew the blocks together so that when those flips happen, that everything's going the right way. That can be a challenge and that is a step. So thank you guys. I appreciate that. I think it's great too, Candice. You're sweet. <laughs> I like, I do love this quilt. It's just, it's sweet and it's precious. And the only fabric in this quilt that is not from the line, again, this is uh, Merriment by Gingerbur from Oda. And the only piece that's not from the line is the binding. I just did a solid. I really, really like this taupe color. I had it in my stash. The binding that went with this kit was made from this bright red fabric right here with the little green leaves on it. And I just thought, oh, Amy got her sojo back. Good for you, Amy. Good for you. So <clears throat> I just prefer the taupe border to the red. So I have that border fabric left and I just put it into my fabric stash. And then I use the same taupe on my hanging triangles. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. And then my label says, and I get my labels at Dutch Label Shop. My label says, my little power tools with red label, first quilt on King Quilter 2, January 2024. So this was the first quilt. And I just did an all over stipple. I didn't want anything that I had to make sure little clamshells matched up perfectly or anything like that, that those are quite hard. Clamshell quilts are quite difficult when you're trying to match stuff up. But uh, overall, I just, I absolutely love it. Um, I had to play around with the tension a little bit to get it right. Feeding the birds. Oh yeah, Harriet, that's that, uh, that's that cooking channel. Would I show you the label? Sure. Oh, I'll show you the blank one. I've got two different sets of labels, y'all. Thank you, guys. So this is a woven label. I get these at Dutch Label Shop. This is a woven label. Okay. Look how detailed that is in that weave. And you can tell it's woven because there it is on the back. Okay. These are for heirloom quilts, heirloom projects. And then I have printed labels. And that's what I do on table runners and placemats or wall hangings or whatever. Right here. Okay. That's my little printed label. And they all have a little line on the back so I can put the year. See, there's the back of that. That's a printed label. So, yeah. Anyway, so I'm really, really pleased with this. So yesterday I spent uh, the day getting my binding on using, you guys, I have, if you're a long armor and you're new, I have this ruler I made and it's in our store site, powertoolswiththreadstore.com. It is made for two and a half inch binding strips. And I've got this ruler and it is designed to help you put bindings on while it's on the long arm. Okay. And Vicki, I just used an off white. Um, I used an off white matching color for the quilting in the thread. Okay. And the beauty of this ruler, <clears throat> and this is an old one. We've got a new one now with a 45 degree mark on it to help you align your quarter, your, your 45s as you're coming off the points, but there's a groove in the back of this. And so it's called the groovy long arm binding ruler. All right. And what that groove does, you put it, you fold your two and a half inch strip, just like always and raw edge to raw edge. And then you can put your, this groove goes up against that fold edge and where these feet, these little feet right here, where they line up on the edge outside, this is perfect to work with a quarter inch foot inside there. You can't use that bowl foot. That doesn't work. But your quarter inch foot, okay? 
the hopping foot that came with the machine when you got it. You got to be careful not to use like those open toes because some of those are skinnier, but it's a quarter inch foot and it's, it just, it's perfect and it's so fast. So it just prevents you, it keeps you from having to wrangle the quilt and put the binding on at a domestic. And it really, really speeds up the process. I've got a video of how to use this on uh, the store site too. So uh, these, these are fantastic. This, it just, I mean, zip, 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 zip all the way around. And the quilt's not even perfectly square and it still worked out just fine. So very, very pleased. These things are a game changer, I'm telling you. And I've got people who have sent me pictures and said, this is fantastic. So I, I had some quilty friends with long arms test it out for me before we went on it. So anyway, but yeah, I'm very, very happy with this. Hi, Elaine. Very happy with this. And uh, it will hang in our house because it just looks perfect with my decor in my living room. So I'm real good. Oh, I need to. I need to stitch down my little points. That's what I was doing with y'all. So anyway, thank you, Judy. You have it. She got the binding ruler. She says it's the bomb. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you're happy with it. I, I just, I'm so lazy. I was like, there's gotta be, I know I can put the binding on with the long arm and, and then I really needed something to help me hold it straight. And I started coming up with my own ways and believe it or not, the binding ruler is made by uh, the guy who services my machines. He's got a laser cutter, a CNC machine and laser cutter at his house. So Mary, you got up early to hear me. Well, good. Welcome. I'm glad you're here instead of watching the replay. Oh, that reminds me, y'all. I'm getting emails about commercials in the replay. Y'all, I can't control that. I'm sorry. That's YouTube. YouTube is doing that. I'm getting a little bit here, so I'm not yelling at you guys. Uh, oh, gosh. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> but, um, oh, all my Aussies are here. Hey, Margaret. <laughs> uh yeah, if you're in the uh, the live, then no commercials. But if you're watching the replay, YouTube's going to throw commercials on that. So there's not much I can do. Do I have a video on that roller with the binding? What's What roller, sweetie? Oh, ruler with the binding. Yes, quilt maker. Yes, ma'am. You mean ruler, not roller. Yes, it, it's on powertoolswiththreadstore.com. And... You know, they have like they you can put little pictures beneath a product. There's a video there uh, of how to use it. So, yes, Kathy, I did the same thing. Uh, Kathy says she paid for no ads. Best thing she ever did. I should have jumped on that ship when it was cheaper because I'm paying $18.99 a month for no ads on YouTube. But you guys, I watch so much YouTube that it's it's worth it. It is worth it. It is the best to pay to get YouTube premium. It really, really is. So, yeah, I just, last night, Keith was sitting on the one end of the couch watching TV, and I've got my AirPods in, and I'm watching YouTube on my iPad. So, it just works out really well. But um, we're supposed to have a nice warm day today, you guys. It's supposed to get up to like 68 or 70 or something like that. So, that'll be nice. Connie says she pays for no ads because she watches it constantly. Yep. Hi, you're here from new. Boy, that jumped up. Valentina's here from uh, Salt Lake. I'm not very awesome. That's <laughs> you watched the Christmas tree skirt last night. <laughs> well, good. Thank you for joining us. So we've got a newbie. Um, hey, you guys, I forgot to mention we've got a virtual kitchen. It's on the other side of the room. So uh, please wander over there. I know I saw some pastries and uh, there might be some other goodies. Definitely coffee and juice. OK, and that is just for fun. There's no other website you need to go to. But everybody really enjoys that. So do I patch and reuse the cutaway stabilizer? I do, Chris. Yeah, I do. I don't. Well, I just kind of, you know, sew them together with a wide zigzag or a join stitch if your machine has one. So oh, the, the welcome committee is on their game. Oh, the Becky says the bacon is gone. Dang it. <laughs> Snooze you lose around this bunch, you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> do I happen to have a video on a ruler on how to do the corners on quilts? 
So Judy, yes, um, it's in a, I did it the other day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll show you. Look at the finishing video on the Kimber Bell mini quilts for February. I've got it right here. I, I can't reach it. So I show how I finish my bindings and how I do the corners in that and the finishing video any of the finishing videos i've got two of them recently where i've used this little plastic template this is an idea i got from uh karen brown from just get it done quilts okay that makes all the difference in the world and it's all about doing that when you're putting the binding on okay so <laughs> I told you guys we have a good time with that kitchen. <laughs> okay. Putting backing in February mini quilt. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, good for you, Donna. Get that done. Yeah. Oh, recommend. Leave it a little bit wider all the way around as you base that on there. Okay. Or stitch in the ditch first and then smooth it out and baste it all around. And leave that a little bit wider and then trim to size. And you'll have a lot less frustration. Okay. Um, I got an email y'all and, uh, she's very upset, <laughs> very upset. She says, I just got a magnetic hoop, which is very hard to hoop. It's the one with the six clips. Is there a trick? It never hoops nice and smooth. Always lumps. Grr. <laughs> she growled at me. <laughs> She wasn't growling at me. She was growling in frustration. So what is she talking about? Okay. Y'all, for years and years, there has been the Dime Designs of Machine Embroidery Magnetic Hoops. I've got links to these things below, you guys. So I just grabbed this one because it's small. It's a six by 10. If you need to hoop something, if you want to use a magnetic hoop for general everyday quilting, no. If you want to use a magnetic hoop for general everyday embroidery, this is, this is the go-to, okay? The dime hoop is the way to go. Why? Because you can slightly tug the outsides of the fabric in this hoop, okay? Don't do it on 100% cotton, like, like a t-shirt. Don't do it on something that's a knit, okay? But if you're doing something, I, don't, I didn't mean 100% cotton. Don't do it on knits. Don't tug on knits. Get that as flat as possible. There's a trick to be able to uh, lay your stabilizer on and put your fabric in if you're not going to float and then put the corrugated plastic halfway on, put the top on and then pull that corrugated plastic out last. That gives you a very smooth hooping, okay? These are great for that. And if you're going to be doing end-to-end -end quilting where you have a definitive, I'm not... I'm not talking about clear blue tiles. I use this with clear blue tiles too, but if you're going to be doing end to end hoop, hooping where you have a definitive start and a stop, okay, and your next hooping, you've got to match that stopping point with your next start exactly like dead on, use a magnetic hoop that that's called a flat magnetic hoop. And the reason for that is because, again, once you get your needle on, whenever I start a second pass, I always do go into needle plus minus and I do a plus one to make that needle jump to the very first stitch and just sit there and then I'll hand wheel it halfway down. Okay. Am I there? Am I on it or not? If you're not, you can barely tug this just a tiny, tiny bit and then you can hit it exactly. So you don't have a gap in between the stop and the start of the next pass. All right. Now, if you're using a non-flat hoop, here's the six magnet she's talking about. You can't do that. The, the way this is designed, this, and y'all, this hoop is heavy, heavy duty. This is a brother magnetic hoop, okay? Got another one here. Got the five by seven. These are, this is designed, K 
Karen wants to know how to do edge to edge quilting on the embroidery machine and not have a knot on the back. Karen, go to the Designs by Juju end to end quilting. All of her designs will come up. Click on any one of those designs and go all the way down to the bottom of the page. And I have a video that'll show you exactly how to do that. It shows you how to do the process from start to finish, whether you've got a camera on your machine or you don't have a camera, floating, regular hooping, whatever. But essentially, you, you just pull your bobbin thread up and then let it tie off is how you do that. So, uh, but I show you exactly how to do that. That video's got hundreds of thousands of views. Okay, thank you, Vicki. She says that video is great. Okay, so this hoop, this, let me show you how this is designed and get it off. You almost have to have a tool to get this thing apart. So here's the base of this hoop. See how it looks like a rooftop? Look at that. It looks like a rooftop. And your magnets are inside of a rooftop cap. Okay, see that? The whole thing looks like a rooftop. Once you put something in this and you snap this on, it's over. This hoop is designed for you to be able to quilt a quilt sandwich. That's why those magnets are so stinking strong. The, the problem with this hoop is there's no wiggle room. But as if you you cannot use, you should not use one of these hoops if you want to do just regular flat embroidery. I don't recommend it. You'll be so frustrated, which is why she growled in her email. <laughs> okay. But this is designed to hold a backing, batting, and a top. Now this hoop is perfect for clear blue tiles. Why? Because no tugging required, okay? Clear blue tiles are a fully enclosed embroidery design, all right? And then you just move it from pass to pass. One of the little tricks that you can do with these that it is you can drag the magnet part from center out, okay? So what I'll do, uh, is I'll start in the middle and this is on a full quilt sandwich and I do top, bottom, side, side, and then add in the little ones. Okay. So I do the big ones first. All right. Either way, but so I start in the middle and I'll drag it on a flat surface and kind of do it at an angle so that, and watch your fingers. Okay. So I don't, rec and same goes with this one. This is, they call this a flat magnetic hoop. While it's got, flat, hold on. While it's got flat magnets, well, it doesn't have a rooftop, okay? It does have edges on these little magnets. It's got a lip, and that lip is going to prevent tugging. It's designed to not allow you to shift that fabric, not you, it's designed to keep the fabric from shifting at all. That's his sole purpose in life. So if you want to do, the, when you're using a magnetic hoop, the only way to get something super, super smooth is to give it a little tug after its hoop. We do the same thing in a traditional hoop with that hoop that's recessed. And some of us have tugged too hard and that hoop pops out, but we all do it. You try the plow test, you might have a little bit of rippling going on. And so you'll just give some little minute, teeny tiny little tugs and you try to do it really gently. Okay. Have you purchased a hoop grid sheet template for the hoops that come with either DM2 or the Luminaire? I have. Yes. I, I've got a video on how to make your own grid. Mm -hmm. If you search power tools with thread grid, I think it'll come up but I've got a video on how to make your own grid. Yeah. a matter of fact, in the video, I think I mentioned it in the video for clear blue tiles. I made a grid, but I have a video on how to do that. The plow test. Okay, Connie. So the plow test is you've got stabilizer in your hoop and you have fabric in your hoop. Okay. You're not floating. You, you've actually hooped it. All right. You can take your finger at the bottom and shove it. And you'll get little plows, you, you're plowing, okay? And you'll get 
little ripples, but when you pull your finger up, everything's fine. If you push it and you get a wad of fabric up over your finger, that's not a good hooping. You're going to be sorry. Yeah. You put sew tights to hold the stabilizer type and then mousetrap the dime and then remove the sew tights. Judy's MacGyverin is what she's doing. <laughs> you got to have sew tights to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but a plow test, I generally don't do a plow test because I can tell when it's flat. Where I do a plow test is if I'm going to be embroidering on a knit because the knit, if it's Knits are funny because if they're pulled too tight, then when you remove them from the hoop, they tend to shrink back up. And now you've got bubbles in your embroidery and you don't want that. And you don't want it so loose that when you do the plow test, you get bunches of fabric under your finger. So knits, a lot of times I'll float them. Yeah. Anyway. Dime hoops are great. I've used them for years and years, you guys. So I, uh, <laughs> she's too broke to do quilting. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, no, dime does not make a, a magnetic hoop for the Janome. Eh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Diana. I think, I'm not sure why, but I think it has something to do with the fact that the, the arm connects on the inside versus the outside. The hoop connects near the brains of the machine instead of the outside. I think that's it. Yeah. Penny, so those hoops are available in my Amazon store. Yes, I have linked them there. And I also have a link directly to designs and machine embroidery uh, down below. So you can go, it says, get your dime magnetic hoops or whatever. I've got it caps. And you can just click that and jump directly to designs and machine embroidery and you'll get it right from them. Usually they have better selection, but I think the ones in Amazon come from the dime store. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you have, so they don't have a, ma a magnetic hoop for all models of Janome machines. Let me put it that way. Some of them have it. Yeah. What's the name of the first six by 10 flat hoop? That's a designs and machine embroidery flat hoop. This is the, the six by 10 for the brother baby lock. Okay. So these are crazy expensive. Okay. They're crazy expensive. I'm not going to lie to you about that. The, which size should you get? You need to buy the most hoop that you can afford. Okay. Because you can always stitch smaller designs and waste some stabilizer. But if you get a small hoop, then you can't stitch larger designs. So if you have a luminaire and you can swing the 10 by 16, do it. If you have, you know, I, I have a 10 by 16. Now I have a nine by 14 magnetic hoop because I bought that before I had my luminaire. I have, I have my brother Quattro and I got the nine by 14 and it fits on there. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So, oh, Dawn from Creative Appliques is here. She says Dime has hoop for certain Janome models. Yeah. They, they don't have it for all of them. So time is money. Yeah. Wendy's right. So then when I got my luminaire, I did get the uh, 10 by 16 for the luminaire. And then when I was at Mull Queens last April, last year, I picked up this six by 10 and I really like this. I really, really like this. So hi, Betty. Yeah, they go on sale like once a year. Dime puts them on sale. So that's always a good time. If you're a subscriber to my blog, powertoolswiththread.com, I will let you know when Dime has hoops on sale. And then you, uh, you know, you'll get an email and that way she usually does that around. I have not had it shift Jan, the 10 by 16. Nope. I haven't had it shift. No, not at all. Oh, y'all. <laughs> I got to let you know, uh, you guys, you know, I love all of you. Okay. But I got to tell you, there's one of me. And thousands and thousands of you, okay? 
And I, I miss emails sometimes and I apologize. I do. I miss emails, but, um, I actually got a little snarky email this morning that I had not answered somebody's question that they asked me several times. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're a sweetheart, Kay. I appreciate that. Uh, and it's, it's not because it's not because I don't like you. It's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because thousands of emails, you guys, and I do everything I can to keep up with them. <laughs> I do everything I can, but um, thank you so much for the super sticker, Kay. I really appreciate that. You are a sweetheart. Uh, the super sticker is a way down below the video. It looks like a little dollar sign and you can tap it and it's your way of showing appreciation for the content. So Wendy's planning on getting a second dime hoop so you can be preparing for your next applique while one's stitching out. Smart. There you go. I love a smart workflow. You guys know that. One out of Michigan. What does that mean, Charlotte? Oh, do you mean one out of a million? <laughs> well, I don't know. There's a, it's hard keeping up with the emails, you guys, you know, it's, it's tough. I, I segment my day. <laughs> Y'all don't get mad. Don't, don't get mad. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but y'all, I get emails and they're like, I've asked you this several times and you haven't answered me. And I'm thinking, oh my, I don't want to hurt her feelings. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys are so sweet. You know, I, the ones I see, I, 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 and I'll tell you, a lot of them go to junk. And I have to, I look at not only my inbox, I look at junk as well, because I'll, I'll see some in junk and I'm like, oh, that's not junk. Yeah. So I, I do what I can, you guys. There's only one of me. I'll run myself through the Xerox, okay? <laughs> I do need a personal assistant. Cynthia, are you available? <laughs> Judy says, I can't even keep up with the comments in the chat. <laughs> Y'all, I'm not, I'm not asking for accolades at all, but I just wanted you to know if I, do, if I skip your email, I apologize. I don't mean it. <laughs> it's just my life. Okay. It's just my life. So I'm going to stitch my corners down while I'm sitting here on my quilt. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie. I'm going to see you later today, aren't I? You're a sweetheart. Thank you. I appreciate that. Bonnie popped me a sticker. Bonnie, you guys, is the lady who was sat with me in the video when we were down in Galveston. And uh, she and I are going to meet up today. And tomorrow we are going uh, to the RV resort where we're going to scope it out and work out our sew together rally for next summer. Very excited over oh, this summer, this coming summer. Very excited about that. So that'll be fun. <laughs> Karen. See, when y'all say, well, she emailed me right back. Now the person that I didn't email back is going, hmm. <laughs> y'all are funny. Oh, my goodness. It's okay. Oh, I wanted to show you something before I get to stitching here. This stipple pattern okay and most of my designs are from urban elements and i wanted to show you thank you jan i appreciate that very nice very thoughtful question what is the method of putting sashing in between rows with no cornerstones yesterday you used your close enough for government work <laughs> if you're putting sashing in between rows with no cornerstones what I do is I'll lay the row out on a table, top row out on a table, bottom row out on a table, and I lay the sashing down, and then I lay the bottom row out on a table. Then I take a ruler, okay, and I line up the edge of the top and the edge of the bottom, and I make little marks on the sashing of where those line up at, and I use those as the target points for the end of each block. Does that make sense? So I'll, and it's usually cause they're sashing in the middle as well. Okay. The month, 
the month of the rally, Barbara is going to, we think it's going to be August. It'll be the end of August, but there's a great big pool and a swim up bar. And we'll be in the rally hall where it's air conditioned. <laughs> So that's what I do on mine. Okay. So I, I, if it's got sashing in the middle in between the blocks up above and the blocks down below, I just lay the sashing. So I've essentially got three things laid out on the table. And then I take a ruler and I lay it so that this matches that. And I make marks that hash marks on the sashing where those need to match. So there's usually two real close together that, that are the sashing itself for the top and the bottom. So yeah, that's what I do. Kay says, oh, I know that place. I've been there. <laughs> Hi, Kim. First time watching live. Oh, she brought some almond puff pastry. Yummy. I had an almond cake the other day. It was delicious. Okay. So, oh, but if you're a long armor, and I want to show you guys, Urban Elements has the cutest, cutest design on sale this week. They put something on sale every week. Hold on. I need something I can roll my mouse around on. I want to share my screen with you guys. Let me present, share screen. And it's called Deb's Feathers. Look at this. This is so cute. The weekly design deal. This is good through the 17th through the 23rd. So if you are looking for some kind of all over feather design that just will blend in, look at how pretty that is. So I jumped on this. And now the thing I love about Urban Elements is they have not only, see it's 20% off. So let's click on that. I want to show you guys. So when you get on this page on Urban Elements for your digital designs, so it's a pantograph edge to edge. You just, you put one for digital or you can get the paper version. And if you want to see how big it is, you come down here and it tells you right here, paper. A single row is 12 and a half inches if you get the paper version. And if you get the digita, and so that kind of gives you an idea, 12 and a half. All right. So I've, I can do that. That's as big as it would go at its largest size. Then you can always make it smaller, of course, in your software if you have that. Or paper rows, 12 and a half. So it's a beautiful, big, pretty, flowing feather. I like that. And then, of course, they have all of the formats. And most of them also have uh, graphic files. Okay. And if you self-print, a single row is seven and three quarters. Okay. So there you go. Love it. I, I think that is so pretty. I just thought that was just beautiful. So was my stop sharing that. Do they work on a luminaire? They have. So urban elements is starting to come out with digitized designs like that for embroidery. So you can poke around on there. You, <clears throat> let me I, let me look real quick before I drag you over there and show you. But um, that's Cool Team Designs, applique, patterns, digital tattoos. No, they don't have any listed. So on here, let me see here. I don't see this particular one for embroidery but they are making embroidery designs and yeah, I don't see them right here. Stencils, design boards. I don't see it in their menu where, which ones would be their embroidery design. So I don't want to drag you all over there, but okay. You made it to the road to California, Gretchen. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I'm going to go to that one year, maybe next year. I, it wasn't in the, what couldn't do it this year. I had, I've got two. Um, so we leave on the 27th for a sew and sail cruise. So a trip to California and come back and jump on a cruise. I just can't do that. I wasn't going to be able to do that.
It's just for long arms. Yeah, it's hammy. It's just for long arms. Designs by Juju has a lot of pretty end-to-end -end quilting designs for the embroidery machine. So you might look at that. Don't forget about the designs that came in the Pro Stitcher. Yes, Charlene, absolutely. Beautiful designs in there. Tons of them. Love it. Oh, good. Connie's going to the Road to California tomorrow. That Y'all, Road to California is a, um, it's only a couple years old. And it's kind of the California version of the Houston quilt market, but still not quite as big. And then um, QuiltCon is another one that's a big one. And that's really geared more toward the modern quilting movement is QuiltCon. So. Anyway. <clears throat> what else did I want to talk to you guys about? Nothing. That's all I have on my notes to talk to you all about. I need my snips. I was so proud of myself last night before I went to bed. I ran around here and uh, tidied my sewing room. And it just, I came out this morning to a very, very clean cutting table. I just loved it. Glasses. It was awesome to come out to clean. What thread do I use in my sewing machine? Uh, Gwen, in my piecing machine, hold on, I got to put these on. I use uh, Connecting Threads Essential Pro Cones. Thank you, Phyllis. You're so sweet. I appreciate that. Phyllis, you're on a fixed income. Don't be doing that. <laughs> so this is what I use. This is a poly matte thread. And that's what I use in this machine. If you And th by this machine, I mean my PQ 1500. Okay, that straight stitch machine. It's a very strong machine. There, if you use, um, I can't see that. If you use 100% cotton thread, you will experience thread breakage when you use your cut feature. There we go. Now see, I put it in there and it fell right out. All right. Sorry, I got to concentrate on that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Shirley, you haven't walked in two weeks. Oh, because of the weather? Yeah. I've been cleaning your sewing room. It is nice to see your sewing table. Well, I'm proud of you for doing that. That's fantastic, Shirley. I do use the same thread in the bobbin. Although, although, whoop, I dropped the end. Last night, when I was doing the binding for this guy, I used embroidery thread in the bobbin because 40 weight embroidery thread, that was the only thread I had that was the right color. Let me show you what I mean. Where's my pair? I need my pink cushion. Okay. So this is the thread. It's a glide. Yeah, it's the Glide. I think it's Tawny. Warm Gray 6 is what that's called. You can't see that. But this is the color I used. And I used this in that bobbin. Zero problems. None. Let me show you. Here's the back. See, because I've got the, the front, I used my stitch in the ditch foot. So the front, I had... Um, white thread okay and on the back that's what that looks like let me get out of it because it wants to focus on my face see that i love this okay so i used because that's the only thread i had and i didn't have to fiddle with the tension or anything it was perfect so y'all don't yes if you get a lot of thread breakage in that Give, give a poly thread a try, okay? Try that. Poly is much stronger than 100% cotton. There's a, and I like the Essential Pro from Connecting Threads because um, it's it's got a mat to it. So like this has a sheen. See how shiny that is? Yeah, this is not. Where'd it go? What? Oh, this is a mat. 
and it looks exactly like cotton thread and I really like it. Yeah, Shirley, I'm funny about my mitered corners. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not showing you the one I messed up. <laughs> but uh, let me see. Let me find another good one. Yeah, these this worked beautiful. Okay, that worked just beautiful. Yep, it just turned out so pretty. So I've got a nice, beautiful stitch. It looks fine. I have tried, um, I've tried many different kinds of thread and I know somebody sent me an email and said, if you look at your manual for that machine, it tells you how to thread it for different kinds of thread. Well, I haven't looked at that manual in probably 10 years, so I didn't do that. And if I did do it, I forgot about it. So I just always sew with a poly thread. I, and y'all, I'm not telling you my way is the right way. I'm telling you my way is my way. <laughs> my way works for me and I'm very happy with that. So um, doesn't poly thread put holes into your fabric? No, not at all. Do you see holes in my fabric? I don't see holes in my fabric. This was pieced with poly thread. Yeah. I pieced all of it with poly thread. I got to sew my little points down. So for those of you that are new, got this idea from Laura Koya. Just so very easy. You take a 10 inch square and sew, fold it into a triangle and then fold it into a triangle again. Okay. And then you put one in the center of your quilt and one on each end on this size. You would put a bunch more if you had a bigger quilt. Yeah. Do they make a pre-wound bobbin for that machine? Uh, Janet, you could, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I make my own bobbins for this machine using the HEMA Pro bobbin winder. Yeah. So you do free motion quilting where you move the quilt Will a stitch regulator help with the stitching? Yes. Yes, Lucy. If you have the opportunity um, to get a stitch regulator, do it. Absolutely. If you're using that machine quite a bit uh, for your to finish your quilts, you're absolutely going to want a stitch regulator. It makes all the difference in the world. It really does. I had a sit down that did not have a stitch regulator and it was miserable. Um, it'll take you a minute to get used to it and then you'll be off to the races. You, it's worth, it's worth the money. It really is. I think so. I'm just doing three little stitches on this again, a poly thread. I'm just catching the tip of the, I mean, not this. Oh, see guys, this is why I don't hand stitch. Do you see that hot mess? This is why <laughs> I hate hand stitching. Ugh. I'm horrible at it. <laughs> Some of y'all are laughing. I hate it. The needle. <laughs> <I don't care. laughs> Let's see. This is terrible. Just terrible. There we go. I have been stitching with poly mat thread for 10 years. Zero problems. Now my thread's not long enough. Maybe my thread was too long to start with, but now it's definitely not long enough to do three. Yeah. You always use pre-wound bobbins. So Karen says that she uses the pre-wounds. So, uh, then there probably is pre-wounds for this machine. I just make my own, especially in this case, because I need a specific color. Oh, that's a nice thought, Judy. Hand stitching makes her feel co uh, closer to her grandmother. That's nice. Neither my mother nor my grandmother hand stitched. 
that I'm aware of. My mother was a garment seamstress. She didn't quilt. She could sew like a mad fool. You tried the bro thread and sent it back. Yeah. Y'all, sometimes you have to listen to what I don't say. I don't use bro thread. I bought it a long time ago, but I don't use it. Now, if your quilt is going to get washed and it shrinks a lot, I got a hot mess here again. Why? Why me, Lord? <laughs> oh. I've got a lot of different colors of Aurafil. Um, if my machine liked Aurafil, I'd use it. It doesn't like Aurafil. Nothing against Aurafil thread. I've got a lot of it. All right. I'm not doing this right now. See, and some people have bro thread and they like it. So whatever works, you guys, you do you, boo. That's fine. I know. Take a sip of coffee. That's what I need. Thank you, Janie. <laughs> I've never used thread conditioner, y'all. He's testing me. I know. <laughs> it's one of those days. We're going to leave here probably about one o'clock. So I get down there around, it's two and a half hour drive. So I get down there around 3.30. And uh, that way I've got enough time to unpack before it gets dark. But that gives me a chance here to get a few things done around the sewing room. Today I'm going to work some more on the border pieces for the Double the Love table runner. Why hand stitch? Put a zigzag and drop the feet dogs. Hmm. I use a Hema Pro, Gloria, Bob and Winder. I'm hand stitching the point to the back of the quilt. So I'm, I can't catch the, I don't want to catch the front. This is my uh, hanging rod is going to go through there. Yeah. And get to avoid the four o'clock traffic. Yeah. So Friday is go look at RV sites, make sure that'll work for the little stitch together we're going to do, which I think is going to be so much fun. We've got cool plans. Whoop. And then I think Saturday, will I be on tomorrow morning? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've got internet down there. I'll be on. <laughs> yes. I've so oh, that reminds me. Thank you for asking that. Y'all, I have decided... I'm going to do my Sunday lives on the third Sunday of the month. Okay. Third Sunday. That works on my schedule for all of the cruises and the trips we've got coming up where I'm teaching and all of that. So that'll be this coming Sunday. We're going to have a live. I'll have some giveaways, that kind of thing. So that'll be fun. Oh, Jean, you've been playing with in brilliance using the cross stitch. Can't wait for me to figure it out. So I was playing with the cross stitch. I'm going to try to thread this again. And um, I was trying. So like I scanned in a stitch card from Lori Holt and was trying to exactly match the pattern on that. And I couldn't get it to work. It's crazy frustrating. So I sent a ticket into them, Brilliance. Don't you know they got back to me on a Sunday? That was crazy. Anyway, um, and after a couple of back and forths, they determined that the size of the stitch, oh, the size of the stitches I was trying to make was too small. What's going on? I'm fixing to unthread the needle I just threaded. There we go. 
So because I would try to make one and it would make two and I try to make two and it would make four. And I'm like, what's going on? I don't understand this. And they said the size of the stitches I was trying to make was too small. Sunday's your birthday, Jude. I hope you win. Oh, yeah, haven't you won before? <laughs> It'll be 4 p.m. Central, Debbie. <laughs> She's marking it on her calendar. Y'all, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get a notification that, that there's a live coming up. All right, now it's time to do my center. So, yeah, that'll be this coming Sunday. We'll do lives. I've got some, uh, I got some Villa Rosa Designs cards that came out, new subscription. And I got some new fabric I was going to show you guys. And I'm in talks with me time to do a uh, sew along um, with them for some of their designs. So that's kind of cool. I hope that works out. That'll be fun. You're Eastern, trying to remember which direction the clock went. So it'll be 5 p.m. for you. And I hope that's not in the middle of your dinner. If so, you can catch the replay. However, you've got to be on the live to win because I can't count replay uh, comments. Sorry about that. All right. Am I going to teach you how to do cross stitch on essentials? Patty, you can't do cross stitch on essentials. When you're doing cross stitch, you're creating stitches from nothing. And when you're creating stitches from nothing, that's stitch artist. That's digitizing. <laughs> Ellen, my hubby and I have our alarm set for Oh my goodness. That's too funny. Oh, hey, Nancy, happy birthday. You want the PQ 1500? The only place you can get it nowadays, I think, is um, on Amazon. And there's a link in my Amazon store to it, if you wouldn't mind. You're going to save yourself 300 bucks. Or you can spend the extra money and get the one, the 1600. And then you, you'd have to go to... Uh, I think all brands has it. The dealer that right now is for sale at dealers. The fifteen hundred they're still in stock on Amazon. Um, and if you don't see the link from my Amazon shop, you can go to amazon.com/shop/powertoolswiththread. That'll jump you to my store site, and it's in there. Okay. So. A lot of you have bought that from my Amazon link. Thank you very much. Ooh, I got a new, I told y'all I was watching Feeding the Birds and she had this Kasori toaster, toaster oven, air fryer, oven, bake, whatever. Oh my gosh, it arrived yesterday. Y'all, that thing is huge. I'm making room for it though, because I use that. You guys are funny. Y'all are so entertaining to me. I love it. Oh, it's eight o'clock. Let me finish up this and then we're going to go. Okay. So yeah, we'll be Sunday. You know, the instructions that come with your machines, is there information to help you out? Oh yeah. And y'all, if you can't find the manual for your machines, go to your machines uh, website and look under support. Okay. You can Google machine manual Brother NQ3700D, I'm looking at Gypsy right here, and it'll come up. There's a PDF of it online, right? So I'll do that all day versus digging around in a piece of paper. The reason I like to do that, y'all, there's a shortcut. When you're looking at a PDF online, wait five minutes. You're almost done ironing your four by fours. <laughs> Damn it. Y'all get stuff done during the day when we're chatting, aren't you? Don't you? That's what a retreat is all about. Yeah, just getting stuff done bit by bit. Um, there's a keyboard shortcut, Control F, might be Command F on a Mac, and that, that stands for find. Okay, when you're on a PDF, any PDF, really any web page, Control F, 
or find and a little box will pop up and you can type in the keyword you're looking for. So when you do that, then um, it'll come up. It'll say, I found 37 instances of the word cross for cross stitch. And there it is. And then you can and you just hit next in the find box and it'll jump to each one individually and it highlights them. So you can see it's very handy. Very, very handy. All right. So. You guys. OK, everybody's having. Oh, you just joined and you have a needle in hand. I know, Deborah. <laughs> no, that's the only time you'll see me with a needle is uh, stitching the the little triangle points on my hanging triangles. OK, that's it. So I can hang my quilt. Oh, thank you, Forever Arts. That's so nice. You're a sweetheart. Thank you. All right, you guys. Um, yeah, a, a thumbs up would be awesome. A subscribe would be great. Uh, I Yesterday, I was six short of 69,300. I have a full kit of Lori Holtz, The Quilted Witch, to send to uh, give to you guys when we hit 70,000 subscribers. Okay. Uh, I've got that courtesy of Lady M, benefactor of my channel. She sent me the full kit. It's a ginormous thing of fabric and the pattern. So uh, you got your stuff done this morning. Good. Can in Brilliant send designs to Gypsy as my luminaire? Yes, it can. It can. Any wireless. Yes, it can. It has. Yes. It might throw an error, but I can go over there and look and see it. So. All right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. This hour flew by. Thank you so much for joining me. I love each and every one of you. You guys are so great to spend your time with me. All right, I've got a lot to do. i got to pack so we can get off to the coast, and I will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. See you tomorrow morning. Bye.